and welcome back to another animation session video. Um, basically, we're going to be doing a sword sheath animation. Well, mostly. Most of it's done already, at least the main poses. So, I basically will play what I have so far. I think it starts at 1835, 36. I don't know what ends at, 2300 something. It's not timed, but let's see. Yeah, as you can see, it is not timed. It's also pretty laggy. And very slow. Alright, so basically this was made with a mixture of motion capture. Now, where is our main character? Mixture of motion capture and uh, shut up a vast and just regular old keyframing stuff. So this is something that is annoying, and I don't know why it does that. It's probably just because my setup is not great, and the camera is not great, and the resolution is not great because I'm using an Xbox 360 camera. And sometimes when you're just like standing in front of it, doing whatever motion, this uh, root bone, groove bone, yeah, yeah. So anyways, what was I? to fix some of these feet things, which is always kind of annoying. Just copying the box select them. And then I'm gonna basically paste them on the other frame here. Paste. Gonna move this a little bit. Um no, what I what I meant was um Sometimes the get into the right view. I don't know, it keeps defaulting to that one view. But sometimes the um whatever the, whatever bone this is, center bone, groove bone, I don't know what. Sometimes even if you're standing using mocap and you're not really yeah, this looks a lot better. Up. And then there you go. Now, but sometimes this bone, when you use mocap, does not stand straight. Like, even if you're standing perfectly straight for whatever reason, it'll calculate this, like, to the front or something, so that, like, the whole model is leaning like this. Which I don't, I don't I have no idea why it does that. I mean I don't I don't wear a track ball suit or something like that when I do mocap because you don't really need to with Megalus mocap. Um, it does a pretty uh, good job by itself just uh, figuring out where the bones are, and I can't really see how using a track suit would actually improve that. Um, I think a better camera with higher resolution would probably improve it. Although the problem is, is I don't, there's a couple other, um, cameras that you can use with, uh, IPI mocap studio, but I, I just have to go through them and see what is worth it or what not. Although, I don't know. I mean, right now. They have the Xbox 360, but maybe the Xbox One camera will be better. There's also the Xbox uh, for Windows um, camera, which I'm not sure what the difference between that and 360 camera is. Might be slightly higher resolution. Like I think that the 360 goes up to 640, um, and I think the other one may go up to 1024. But I have to check that. 
So let's see what we want to do here. Um, first of all, let's go back to the beginning just to see what the heck we have so far. So she stands up. It's super slow because. All right. And then that is really slow. So we're going to drag. Where is the final? That's the final movement. Okay. I'm going to drag these way over because that is way too slow. It's two. It's two. Fifteen. I'm just going out to five thousand. Select all those and we're going to drag these over. Okay. Still, I really want clean. Still very long. So, yeah. And I just did have a lot of mocap, which I just cleaned up, made key poses, deleted all the in-betweens. Um, Say twenty one forty, and that's where I'm at now. Just kind of trying to clean up some of this. All right, do this sheep animation. Let's see how it is again. A lot of stuff that's really out of whack because of deleting a lot of. 1935, let's see how far this is between, Jesus, it's almost at 100 frames, more than 100 frames, uh, 1990 till the end, move this sucker way, way, way back, that was way too, 1835, so this should be like 1870 or something like that, let's try that here, let's see. Even that end is still kind of slow. Okay. These are all pretty much guesstimations of of uh, I'd just say where these frames are, I'm just kind of moving on to see. Alright, wait one more time. Alright, I'm going to add in like a sword spin or something like that. That's, uh, except for that sheath, I want it to be more... More like... Yeah, let me move this out. Something like move over and click. Yeah. Ah. All right. So, okay, right about. I can just sort up. So right about from 2004 to, wait, 1985, down, 1980. So 1985, 1995, I'm going to do the sword spin. First of all, let's see. Ugh, this is being terrible. Crashing, being very annoying. I don't know why this is. Maybe it's the um, shader I have on. Uh, where's my sword? Was it 1980? Front. Front. Yeah. 
Alright, yes. Great, hey, keep running. Thank you. Okay. So, we're just gonna do sword spin here. Uh, rotate this. I'm gonna speed up because I think my window for sword spin is not. Yeah, 1990 should be done. Stop. Alright, so let's slide these over. And back to beginning. There we go. Okay, so that's not that bad. 1980. Let's go into the model. And scroll up. Ugh. We're going to do a load of hand pose. Showy. Oh, not showy one. Which is basically. Show you right. This is basically open the hand. Make another keyframe. And 1990 is when it ends, which we can just copy. Box select. Let's get this camera. I'm just gonna copy the. Oh my god, deselect. Copy this. And pose. That's another good thing too I like is that um, iClone is kind of like this too, where you don't have to worry about hand poses too much unless you're doing something like piano playing or something. Where oops, what does that have? I don't think. Yeah, close that. Okay, so spin that sword, pop, save, and and something maybe more dynamic. Move this over. Stop animating all the facial stuff. Hardest part really is uh, sheathing the sword. Because the sword does not have a, a blade morph. Meaning, a good way to do, like, if you want to do things where you, like, the sword is going to fit in the sheath. Um, the model was made together um, with the sword and the sheath, so that's not really that difficult. It's just kind of lining stuff up and lining up the in-betweens is really annoying. Like, as you can see, so... For some reason, it's really messed up. How the heck did this get messed up here? Okay. Keyframe that was not edited. Since these, um, I have to figure out how to make, uh, inverse kinematics on the hands. Although, I have used models where they have that um, in MMD. Um, for some reason, they, they just act really weird. When you go to move stuff, and what I mean by inverse kinematics, like they'll have a, just like the leg, um, 
which is inverse kinematics, where you can click on this ankle, then move this little leg around like that, and everything, all the joints move and stuff like that. They do, uh, there is a way of doing that for the hands uh, and arms and stuff. Um, but the models that I've used that do have that are really annoying, and they, uh, they, they do weird stuff, like you move the, um, the hand and like the shoulder will jump all over the place, and then when you go play it back, um, it may look fine just, you know, scrubbing through the timeline, but then you can notice like the shoulder and jumping in weird positions because of the way that, uh, the IK is, and... I don't know, I've not been real good at that to kind of mess with that. So, now we have to do what? Just make a keyframe. Oh man, I have no, why, no idea why my stupid thing keeps crashing. Every quarter, just whatever reason, just keeps crashing. Might be because it's, uh, particular animation is you know what? Let me outside parent where is it? Went to parent B Saya to Echo's and I don't know what hand bone is called. Pose pose. That'd be a really easy way to do it. Let's see. He's not crash again. I really need to label these things. It's not a little one. That's null 28. Alright, so, whatever. Say... 2047, that's pretty good. Um, let's go down here. And basically I'm going to... do the Saya to Ankos and which is 28. Alright, so front, now, uh, we start to, is this the right bone? Yeah. So basically now, all I did was parent, when it says outside parent, all that means is that um, you're taking this bone that's part of the sheet, and attaching it to the hand bone. So wherever I move her hand bone now, uh, will also move the sheet. Tricky thing, of course, is doing this, as you can see, 2046 and then 2047. Because the outside patent bone changed, means that the, oops, the, you know, the bone changed, so that means the, word, the placement of the entire thing changed. So. Alright. Uh, just have to rotate it and make it look kind of similar so that it won't be super noticeable. Although, this is kind of annoying, so we'll see where it goes. Yeah. But this is one of the good things, like I said, when you use um like a low frame rate, these uh issues, as you can see there's a little jump there between the actual outside and whatever. Um, but yeah, doing that, the lower the frame rate, the choppier, of course, the playback, but it actually helps with stuff like that. Like if this was, um, done at 60, like I'm doing the Spike, uh, versus Revy one, it would have to be a lot more precise and where exactly, um, you know, you're putting stuff, it just makes it more difficult to um, 
few things, especially when you're having like objects thrown and picked up and whatnot. Wow, this frame is bad. That arm is in a complete freaking wrong place. And things like sheathing swords are really annoying. It's just because it's so precise, it just means you're just going to be tweaking the what you would call it the bone structure a lot, trying to make sure that, especially with no, like if I had an IK bone here, I could move this whole thing just until I get it to the right place. But since I don't, I have to move the shoulder and move the, whatever, move the clavicle, move the shoulder, and it just gets really kind of annoyingly tedious because when you move the shoulder, of course, you have no idea. Um, I have an idea, sort of, but I'm not going to know exactly that, you know, this is the right place where the uh, move wrist and stuff lines up. I just have to kind of move everything together. As you can see, this is pretty close, but no cigar. And of course, I can, you know, to uh, manage to get the front part of it in, but then the back part of it sticking out. It's just like, ugh. It's too high, now it's too low. Now it's almost correct. <laughs> yes, please. I'm going to say that because it is annoying. But one thing with this series or whatever the heck this is going to be, because um, this is part of a fight scene. Wow, that is, what? <laughs> wow, that next frame is just, oh my god, what happened there? But, okay, I'm just going to copy basically what we have already here and put it on the next frame since the next frame is so out of whack as far as the arm positions. Copy that sucker and paste it. Okay, good. This is close. So, basically, with this uh, series or whatever, I don't know why, to me, it seems like sword fighting or whatever. Um, animation with 3D is, to me, is kind of the most difficult because, for some reason, um, Kung Fu and, you know, martial arts and stuff, it's actually easier. But I think because of the length of the sword and how it's connected to the body and also because of, I guess you have one point of you know, access, you have your whole wrist and that can move and stuff. And, and moving the wrist slightly will move the sword a lot. And because of that, it's really, really hard to animate um, sword fights and stuff like that. Just because you can move your wrist and and uh, the sword just goes all over the place. So, you know, you have a huge arc which you can just create just by rotating your wrist without even moving the rest of the body. So when you add in the rest of the body to the movement, you can, I mean, it's good because you can do so much in a sense. Um, it's just very difficult. Actually, I found um, doing that um, whole arm spear animation, whatever, that that was actually easier to do than some of the sword animations. And so far, I have not been able to kind of do a decent um, sword animations. I was looking at a couple games. Because usually in games, uh, of course, like, uh, you know, uh, Dark Souls and stuff like that, 
you know, they have a set a set attack pattern, and I'm kind of thinking instead of making like an organic fight, um, basically making set attacks like an overhead swing and uh, you know side swing and just different attacks that with the sword. Oh my god, getting this in the shape is just crazy. Would you just select this bomb, please? Thank you. But anyways, you know, just making a couple stock movements and then combining them in different ways uh, might be the way to go. Um, which is why I like that X Anima game. Because they kind of did that. They kind of have like, you know, like one swing, but it just it's just because of the whatever engine they're using in that game, which is, like I said, it's like uh, Endorphin, which is a, um, I guess, motion data physics simulator, which kind of looks a lot like that, um, which gives physics weight to all of your motion data bones and stuff like that. So if you have somebody throw a punch and then like, you don't even have to animate getting hit by the punch because it will automatically, you know, add physics to each person. So it'll do the stumbling and all that stuff really well. Oh, I cannot get this in here. That's what I mean, when you don't have ember schematics for the arms, it's really tough. You know what? That is kind of freaking as close as it's going to get. Oh, wrong way. Wrong way too. I think that's what I'm going to try. I'm going to try to just make a couple stock animations. Oh my god. Come on. Trying to control, not control, not control, control the undo. Can I get it any closer than that? No, it doesn't look like it. Ugh. Serious, why is this not doing? I'm good, just whatever. Now I'm going to figure out how I'm going to, first of all, save, because I don't want to do that again. This thing keeps crashing. So, first of all, let's, um, which I was on camera. So we looked at previous, is out there. Um, I want to shoot this from the low, low angle. Stand up. Move the camera up. Pan up, and yeah, the physics are off, so it's uh, all right, whatever. All right, uh, what do we want to move this camera? I don't know, low angle, it looks good. I don't know, that skirt looks ridiculous because there's nothing physics, but whatever. A, an extreme camera angle? I don't know. Just sort to... It's too close. Oh wait, no, maybe it doesn't look like it. Something like that. I have no idea how this is going to look. 
This is actually just, uh, cause I already made the fight scene. Bam. Okay. And then, I don't know. This is actually just filled in right before the title shot. I want to have this right down here. Why not? So right there. Last shot. Want to change? And yeah, that's one thing that you can do. Um, change, of course, the perspectives. Like I said, uh, the lower view angle uh, means it'll look more 2D. Okay. Uh, now the last freaking frame. Of course. So yeah, you can change um, between camera cuts. Just slide this view angle up and down. The higher you slide it, the um, more intense the angle becomes. The lower, the more 2D it becomes. So let's just fix this last friggin' frame. And then I will animate the facial expressions. And then the scene will be done. So pretty much this scene I did have another scene, but I'm cutting it out because it's not really good and it doesn't really add anything to the animation. So I'm pretty much done with this other than, you know, editing. Um, the next video I'm going to do is not going to be, well, I guess it will technically be an animation session. Um, the next video will uh, be like editing. Oops. That is long for the hair, not a head. Maybe just editing, you know, adding in sound effects and whatnot. Hopefully, I'll, I'll try that. I don't know if my computer will be able to handle that. Probably not, but who knows. Ugh, stop. Why? Alright. Register. Shink. Spin. Blah, blah, blah. Getting up. Okay, let's try it now. 1835. See what we have. Yeah, remember, I'm not turning the physics on because this is already running at like one frame per second. So I'm just have to clean it up a little bit, but there you get the basic idea. Um, and like I said, I'll clean it up off screen since this is being really annoying today. And I have no idea why it's being really, really slow. Might be because of these rocks, actually. They're pretty high poly. And there's a lot of them too, so it's probably those rocks. But anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Next video will be basically, um, some editing and putting this all together into a coherent story and then actually probably doing the Adobe After Effects stuff. So 